and he guides whom he wishes. He guides whom he wishes towards a straight path. Meaning, the benefit. This is the this is the answer to the question. That what's the benefit? The benefit is at core a sense of peace, of serenity, of security, of happiness. Now, it is usually thought that that expression, Dar es Salaam, Allah Yadaru Ila Dar es Salaam, it is usually thought of as referencing the life to come. And so while we do not deny this, we have to be reminded that the benefit is not just in the life to come, but the benefit, rather, the benefit is in the here and in the now. وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ It's not just for the after, but it's also for the dunya. And this point about the benefits in this world is given again and again and again and again and again in the Qur'an and similarly demonstrated in many of the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final prophet, the seal of the prophets. وَاللَّهُ يَدْعُوا إِلَى دَارِ السَّلَامِ Allah summons us to a sense of serenity. Indeed, even Iman itself, faith itself, is having a sense of security and surety. I mean, in, in Arabic, that's, that's the core meaning of the word Iman, is having that sense of, of security and, and um, surety. The Quran goes on to say, you may recognize that Often in Salat al Jumu'ah, I will recite this ayah in the in prayer, or the sentence in prayer. He says, "Walla dhikrullahi akbar, wallahu yaglamu ma tisna'un." He says, and this is a very important expression, by the way. He says that the remembrance of Allah is the greatest source of inspiration and power. Moreover, Allah knows what you produce. So, that serenity, that sense of security, a sense of security in Allah, in his authority, in his wisdom, in his omnipotence. That sense is to produce something. It is to produce something. And it produces something great. Or to phrase it in another way, it manifests something wonderful. And the way that manifests will of course vary from person to person, and from place to place, and from time to time. But the greatness, if I can use that term, will nonetheless be manifested. So this is what we are here to be reminded of. And we obviously we are here in obedience to Allah because Allah has directly said to come 
to the masjid for the Friday prayer. So let me return to the other, to the ayah, which is the center of this discussion. He guides whom he wishes to a straight path. A straight path. It's indefinite here. The grammar is indefinite. So, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that once that yaqi, that certainty, is present in the heart, that certainty about Allah, that certainty about His wisdom, that Allah will guide you to a position in life that is best and most appropriate. And similarly, this happens in different parts of life. There will be a time when you have a certain job, and then you do not have that job anymore. There will be a time when you have a certain position, and then you have a different position. This is not random. This is all according to the, the sunnah of Allah. نَأْتِ بِخَيْرَ مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةً أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرَ مِنْهَا وَمِثْلِهَا أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا لَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Very appropriate for this discussion. That Allah says, and I want to prove this point before moving forward, Allah says that whatever Allah cancels, or makes forgotten of signs that he replaces with something similar or better. In the case this frightens you, Allah says, Alam ta'alam anna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Don't you know that Allah has power over all? Then he says, Alam ta'alam anna Allah ala mulku samawati wal arba. Wa ma alaku min dun illahi min waliyin wa la nasir. He says, Don't you know? That to Allah belongs the dominion of the earth, of the, of the universe. And that other than Him, that other than Him, you have none to give you protection and none to give you uh, victory. So, a straight path, going back to that ayah. So let's look at Deen for a moment. The straight path, it takes the, it, it, from a Deeni, uh, looking at it from the perspective of Deen, or looking at Deen, I should say, that the straight path takes the form of Islam. Islam, as it has been preached, and, and um, followed by all the prophets and messengers of God, but it's found in a completed way in the coming of the Quran. And in a completed way in the person to whom the Quran was given, the seal of the prophets, Muhammad sallallahu the universal Rasul, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So, perhaps in life, in one's career, in one's personal life, perhaps we are still traveling. You know, we're trying to get there. Maybe that's happening in life, maybe it's not. But I would dare say that those issues about worldly issues becomes resolved I hope this does not sound like a naive thing to say but those worldly issues become resolved when the when we, we have managed the foundation correctly the foundations of Iman when the foundations of Iman are healthy and sound then everything else will follow. 
And there is obviously more to say about this, but for the moment we pause and we ask Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are obedient to Him. We have spoken at length about Allah, about the benefits that are derived from knowing that Allah is the all-knowing, that He is the omnipotent. And having that sense of serenity that uh, emerges from having the confidence, and how that leads to a better and more appropriate place in life. And in a way, this is what I have said is an explanation of the first part of the kalima. La ilaha illallah. In a way, all I have said has been thoughts on the expression La ilaha illallah. We can look at it like that. So, where does the Prophet come in? Alayhi salatu wa salam. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Where does the Prophet come in? What does the Prophet وسلم, have to do with any of that? Why do they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? Why is the statement, Muhammad is a messenger of God, connected to our declaration of faith? Well, was actually, the answer to that is actually very simple. We do that in order to be, because it reminds us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not some abstract theory. Meaning this, that when people talk about religion and they talk about God, you know, they talk about it in a, in a, in a theoretical, philosophical sense. Right? They talk about it in a theoretical, philosophical sense. And often when people talk about theology or, or philosophy, there's no worldly application at all. It's just sitting around drinking tea and, and talking, about, uh, talking about things. But saying Muhammad Rasulullah reminds us that Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one and only God, is involved in the world of man. And that activity, the activity of Allah, it manifested in many ways, of course, but in the, at least in the context of this conversation, it is manifest in the fact that Allah has sent forth prophets, and that Allah has sent forth messengers, and Allah has sent forth scripture, which includes the Qur'an Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma kana Muhammad, the Qur'an says, ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadun rijalikum, it says that Muhammad, Allah's blessings and peace be, of, peace be upon him, is not, was not the father of any of your males, rather he was the messenger of God and the seal of the prophets. And, and God has knowledge of all things. So, returning to the Prophet for a moment, I want to emphasize that we do not elevate him, we do not worship him. He was the first one against this. One of the famous, uh, one of the most famous uh, hadith about this point. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, do not do to me what was done to Jesus, son of Mary, Alayhi Wasallam. He says, when you reference me, reference me as Abdullah Rasulullah. Refer to me as the servant of Allah and his messenger. Notice he even says, he says Abdullah wa Rasulullah, not Rasulullah wa Abdihi. Notice he says that Abdullah wa Rasulullah. Does it see the humility there? He says, reference me as the servant of 
God and his messenger. So we say Muhammad Rasulullah because it, it helps us to, to recognize Allah's uh, activity in the world of man and recognizing the Prophet for what he was and for the inspiration that, that his life uh, generates. So I want to share, and I still have a few minutes, I want to share a, a couple of quotations to illustrate this point. And this is from a book, it's called Islam, Past, Present, and Future. It's by a Catholic theologian named Hans Kuhn. Um, it's a very uh, dense book. And I would say that he has some criticisms of Islam. He, he criticizes the Quran on certain things, he criticizes Muslim practices on certain things. But I want to read to you briefly just two quotations of how this person sees our guide and our Imam Rasulullah. Okay, so he says, this is page 116 of this book. If anyone is interested, I will show you. You cannot have this, but this is my book. But I will, I will allow you to look at it for like maybe two seconds after the Nimaz is over. If we look back on the work of, no, 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 excuse me, if we look back on the life's work of God's messenger, he has that in quotations marks, we can understand the judgment of Muslims. Muhammad's achievements were, were tremendous, indeed epoch-making, and matched by, by very few others before or since. This should be recognized without reservations even by Christian theology and by the Christian churches. That's a very, you know, that's a very powerful thing to say for someone who's not a Muslim. And he goes on to say, in page 124 of this book, I'm telling you the book, I'm telling you the references so you can look for yourself and not try to steal the book from me. Because I don't feel like searching for get this book back again. He says, no, I'll read this part, not the other one. Any Jew who disputes that Muhammad has the qualities of a prophet should reflect that in the Hebrew Bible there are already very different prophets. And he goes on to say, any Christian who disputes that a prophet can come after Christ, meaning Jesus should reflect that according to the New Testament there are also authentic prophets after Christ, men and women who confirmed him in his message, interpreted them, and stated them in a due time in situation. I hope that, that those two quotations were, there are other quotations about other subjects, but I hope those two quotations were clear from someone who is, at least he has some criticism of the religion, he has some criticism of Islam. So when we say Muhammad Rasulullah, that Muhammad was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we say that, we say that again, I want to emphasize this, is that we say that as a reminder of Allah's intervention, uh, I shouldn't use the word intervention, but uh, Allah's involvement in the world of man. And there is also a practical reason that we say this, is that we say this acknowledging that the Qur'an is the word of Allah, meaning that the Quran is the message delivered through the messenger. So, as we conclude, let us conclude with this point. Do have Iman. Be confident in Allah. Be confident in Allah. You know, one of the 
my favorite verses, Allah describes the believers in Surah Al-Baqarah, Al Imran. He says, "Al-Ladini yatafakkunu fi khalaq al-salawati wal-ard, Rabbana ma khalaqta hada baal wa subhanaka fa qina al-azab nur." He says that Allah Almighty says there about those who have faith is that they are not blind. They're not. They don't follow faith blindly. Rather, they think about the universe. They're thinking about deep things and not wasting their time on PlayStation. They're thinking about creation. And they have this prayer in their mind. Our Lord, you haven't created all of this without a purpose. No, Rabbana ma khabta hadha batila. Subhanak, you are glorified. Faqila azabana. So do protect us from the from the punishment of hell, from the power of hell, or from the punishment of hell. It's a very powerful statement there. So be confident in Allah. Be confident in His plan. Be confident in His wisdom. And find inspiration in the human messengers, and in particular the messenger who, uh, for whom we know the best. Now that we know the best, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as Allah says, He says, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُ بِحِبُّ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ He tells the Prophet to say, and it's mentioned in the Quran, I just quoted the verse, He says, say, if you love Allah, then you have to follow the Prophet. فَاتَّبِعُونِ Follow me, me and follow the Prophet. And He says, He says, May you dare your Rasul, فقد تعالى الله. That when you give your obedience to the Prophet, to the Messenger, you're actually giving your obedience to God. That doesn't mean the Messenger is God. No, no. It means that He is the one conveying the divine message, and that He deserves respect and to be followed. But in this case, I also want to emphasize that He is He is the He is the um, He is the one that we should be inspired by above all other inspirations. Meaning it's okay to read and follow particular individuals and blah, blah, blah. That's fine. That's fine and wonderful and good. But none can trump. Please do not be mad at me for using this term. None can trump Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Faqad kana lakum fi Rasulillah ego sotul hasana. Allah says that you have in the Messenger of Allah a goodly model for any who has hope. This is the point. Who has hope in Allah and hope in the final day and who, who will contemplate upon Allah much. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be people who are ever increasing in our obedience to Him. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi al-akhirah hasanata wa kini azab al-nar. Rabbana la taj'alna ma'al qawm al-zhalimin. Rabbana amanna fa'tubna ma'al shahideen. Rabbana la tuzil qudumana ba'ad izqadaytana muhablana min madhuq rahmatan innaka anta al-wahab. Rabbana innaka jami'a al-nasi li yawm la rayba fi inna Allah la ikhud. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة إن الصلاة كان على المرسلين كتاب الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر